Good morning. Also people here from the Netherlands. Okay, good morning. Uh, my name is Jarno Duursma. My company is called Studio Overmorgen. I'm an author of several books. I'm now writing on my fifth one, Algorithms In, Humans Out, How to Stay Human in the Era of Artificial Intelligence. Which of you has ever been to Mumbai in India? Please raise your hand. Okay. I have, but then again, I haven't. Let me explain. I still vividly remember, and it was 1997, I was sitting with my twin brother in a computer room of his school, and we were on the internet. We could log into a website where you could see a webcam facing a random square in Mumbai in India. And gradually, you got to see what was happening there in real time in Mumbai. And I was captivated. I was hypnotized by this, 1997. And I had a similar experience in 2014 when I saw this video. Who knows what this is about? Please raise your hand to give me some perspective. Seven people. OK. <laughs> Let me take a step back. OK, this is a video of a technology conference. And uh, the company is called DeepMind, bought by Google later. And this is the game called Breakout. And this machine had no rules pre-programmed in advance. It just learned by doing. And within a few hours, this system, this artificial intelligence system, reached the high score. And once again, I was captivated. I was hypnotized uh, about what was happening. And it might not surprise you, but the very day it was possible, I bought an Amazon Alexa speaker, an Apple Watch, I have now apps that complement my sentences. I have apps that show me what kind of food I am eating, etc., etc. I have apps that suggest books to me, and I have apps that send me a notification when they think I'm in the middle of a workout. So we've seen a qualitative growth spurt in the field of artificial intelligence. These systems are getting smarter and smarter each day. And this will give us superhuman cognitive capabilities. These systems will give us answers to questions we didn't even know we had. They are going to help us before we knew we needed help. And I'm not going to talk about the robots that are taking over our jobs. Because it's not the robots, it's the software, as we all know, I presume. And I'm certainly not going to talk about consciousness in artificial intelligent machines. Because I have no clue how this will happen, and if this will happen. And if any of you has this clue or knows how consciousness will be raised in artificially intelligent machines, Please come to me in the coffee break. We can make, create our own startup. <laughs> so when we look at the landscape of artificial intelligence, we look at different kind of animals. So all narrow domain and all different. So one animal is fast, and the other one is robust, and the other one is strong, and the other one is lightweighted, etc., etc. So we have this landscape full of artificially intelligent systems, and they can all do one thing very good, but the rest they cannot do. Artificial intelligence system will fulfill needs in the future that we aren't even aware of nowadays. Just with the smartphone is nowadays fulfilling our needs that we weren't aware of 10 years ago. You know, like with activity trackers and the camera to PDF and the rain radar. So I'm, I'm from the Netherlands, it rains a lot. So it's one of the most used apps in, in the Netherlands, Buienradar. We weren't aware of the power and uh, the value of these apps 10 years ago. 
And I will start with the four waves I have detected in artificial intelligence. The first wave is business AI. It combines machine learning, deep learning, statistics, A-B testing, etc., etc. The second one is humanizing AI, where more and more human capabilities are being taken over by machine-specific human capabilities. The third wave is the assistant AI, and the fourth is the autonomous AI. And to assure you, at the end I will speak about some of the disadvantages of artificial intelligence systems, especially on us as humans, because there are happening things that we need to be aware of. Okay, first of all, the business AI. This is rather simple. This is booking.com, and it knows it has insights uh, that uh, can make predictions about people who are going to Scheveningen, also are going to Antwerp, and people who book a room in Dubai also go to Bogota and to Milan. It's a combination of statistics, machine learning, uh, neural nets, uh, A-B testing, etc., etc. So these systems can make predictions, can make uh, of the world around us, simulations, etc. This is Zest Finance, and it uh, detected that... Okay, so Zest Finance is a company where you can get a loan rather easy by filling out a form online and it detected that people who fill in this form with capital letters are bad refunders. <laughs> so insights that we even couldn't think of are detected by these smart machines. And the second wave is humanizing AI where human capabilities are being taken over or matching this of artificial intelligent systems. So the line between human skills and that of AI are becoming thinner. And this is all, once again, narrow domain. So you now have systems that can listen, systems that can talk, uh, that can uh, produce speech, uh, etc., etc. Reading, seeing, etc. First, let's have a look at language. This is a company called Digital Genius. I was there uh, like a year and a half ago. It's, like it said, customer support on autopilot. And this started as a recommendation engine. So customer employees were chatting with customers and the system made the recommendations for the right answer. So the Dutch airline KLM is using this and it is now automated. So the system does some suggestions and uh, the employee picks the right answer and this way the machine learns and now some of the uh, chats are automated by uh, algorithmic uh, machines. And this is very uh, necessary because the scale is, is growing enormously of questions online through social media, WhatsApp, Messenger, etc., etc. And an AI system, when we look at language, even detected false police statements. It detected, Veripol is the, is the name of the system, it detected that people who give a false statement talk a lot about the products that have been stolen, and people who give a, 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 talk the truth, uh, give a good uh, statement, they talk a lot about details and the experience. So an AI system detected the difference and gave us some insight purely based on language, analytics, and now detected false police statements. And when you take this a step further, this is the system, uh, uh, a, a model created by OpenAI, and it can generate text by itself. So it guesses the next word in the sentence and then it can create text by itself. And not only that, it can also answer questions based on this text. As you can see on the right, see if my pointer can make it. Okay, as you can see on the right, uh, the question, the researcher asked a few questions and the AI system uh, gave the answers to that question. And this is the text on the left. You see the text generated 
uh, by the AI machine. So let me be honest, the, it's not perfect, right? So here you see a really good example of this model. It's not perfect, but it will be within, let's say, five, six, seven years, then an AI system can generate uh, uh, pieces of text by itself, thousands of uh, articles a minute. And OpenAI, as the name suggests, always releases their models, except this one. They didn't release it because they were afraid that this system would be used for misinformation via Twitter or uh, websites, etc. So this model wasn't released because they didn't know what would happen if this system would fall into the wrong hands, if it could be used for misinformation. We all know that we are now living in the post-truth era and this is the software that can be used to amplify the post-truth era. Okay, that was language. The second one is the eyes, the vision technology has eyes to see. This is iPoli, it's a company that, uh, as you can see, it makes six figures of the customers and I will read what is happening. Customer zero, customer one, standing, reaching, picking up, standing, eating, eating, scratching his head, picking up, opening bottle, drinking, etc., etc. So technology has eyes to see. So some of our human capabilities are being taken over by smart models, smart machines. Once again, narrow domain specific. If you put this uh, system, uh, 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 take a look at, at, at a chessboard, it doesn't know what to do. Okay, and this is in, I was in October, I was in China. Okay, can you put up the volume? Is there someone? Okay, so this is a, a company restaurant where you have a plate with your dinner or your lunch and you put it under a computer vision image recognition camera and it detects what is on and you have this WeChat account and you scan a QR code and you uh, everything is being paid. So if you know somebody who's doing this kind of work, remind them of the qualitative growth spurt of artificial intelligence. And when we talk about computer vision, we talk about facial recognition technology. Not only is, and this is all open source software, right? So uh, 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 gender, ethnicity, uh, age, but also um, emotion. So facial recognition software can detect some of our emotions. I'll get back to that uh, later. This is what, I was in October, I was in Beijing in Shanghai to uh, check out the digital uh, uh, technologies. And this was an unmanned uh, uh, store because, okay, now the, the, the rent in Shanghai is, is so high that people cannot have a low wage job. So they can't find the employees for the stores. And this is an uh, unmanned store. So you walk in, you have your WeChat account, the all-in-one app for China, and then you scan a QR code. So this is identification, right? This is identification. You scan the QR code, you wait uh, 10 seconds, so the camera scans your face, and when you walk out for the first time, you do the same pr procedure once again, and it detects your identity, and you, for the second time, you walk out, and uh, uh, the system uh, detects your face, and it, uh, you will pay through your WeChat account. Facial recognition technology, this is Lemonade. They claim that they can, um, the system works with lie detection. It's an insurance company. You have to make a, a video of 15 or 20 seconds, can't remember. And you have to tell the camera, the system, uh, what has happened and how do you, how, uh, uh, for what reason you are claiming your insurance. And I talked to, because I was very skeptical about this. I think this, this is difficult to, uh, but I, I talked to the senior developer who helped with this system. And he said, we have a pretty high rating of success in detecting lies. Uh, what, what people say, how fast they are talking, uh, using um or mm, uh, silences, nonverbal movements, etc., etc. 
So I'm not sure if this is working or this is not because I haven't tested it myself, but it's an interesting area where software is uh, maybe or maybe not detecting uh, lies. Okay, so the voice. It was 2000. Okay, can, and I was ready to go out and change the world. Is there someone that could put up the volume? studying best practices and effective pedagogies. I had spent that entire summer interviewing for it's a computer. jobs in my native Oklahoma's public school system. It was 2019 and I was ready to go out and change the world. Armed with years of studying best practices and effective methodologies, I spent that entire summer interviewing for education jobs in my native Washington's public school system. Okay, pretty neat, huh? Speech generation. So, so 2016, 2017, 18 was a lot about natural language processing, and 2019 will be about speech generation. So, all the money pouring in the startups and the companies who are working on speech generation uh, is really enormous. Next stop, emotional detection. So, this is a software company. You might have heard of Cogito, and it detects the emotion with the customer. Uh, if it, uh, the, the customer is uh, annoyed, is irritated, and the employee gets um, advice on his or her screen how to deal with people that are annoyed. And when the employee is talking a little bit uh, slow or is sounding tired, the employee gets an icon of a cup of coffee on his or her screen. So quality coaching uh, of uh, call center employees is done much more by artificially intelligent system. This is a patent used by, now de developed by Facebook. It's trying to uh, predict your emotion. And this is interesting because Facebook wants to know how you are feeling so it can show you when you are feeling uncertain, it can show you fashion uh, advertisement, right? So it detects how you feel based on what you type, how fast you type, but also the pressure you put on your keyboard while you are typing. So Facebook is, is creating an emotional passport that detects how you um, use your smartphone, when you use your smartphone, how many times you open it, etc., etc. So we use our smartphone all day, and this is our unique digital identity, but it's also our emotional identity. It is uh, the next holy grail for the larger tech companies. And one thing about this facial recognition technology, I think we must be very critical about the fact that companies are claiming they can detect our emotions based on our facial expression. Because our face is not a, a one-dimensional mirror of the soul. Life is not a Walt Disney film where, where this is just universal facial expression. So I think we must be very critical about this software and also about emotional, intelligent software. We must be a little bit critical about this because what if this software is being used in a performance interview, a job application interview, uh, it's a, a police interrogation, in conversation with your lawyer, etc., etc. Okay, fourth wave. I'm sorry, third wave is assistant AI, the digital butler a metaphor for all these apps, smart devices, smart speakers, smart websites, etc., etc. They know who you are, what you're doing, and why you are doing this. They understand us before we understand ourselves. They will give you answers to questions you never know you knew you had. They will help you before you knew you needed help. Increasingly making decisions about us, for us, and on our behalf, the digital butler. And when we look at all these digital butlers, let's say the Alexa system, then the future is very interesting. It's like comparing the Blackberry from 2000. Who of you had, which of you had, had a Blackberry? Please raise your hand. Yeah, we all had. Did somebody say, I still do? <laughs> Please you raise your hand. That man. Just kidding, just kidding. That caught me off guard, so. Um, so comparing Alexa 
to the, is, is like comparing the BlackBerry from 2003 to the iPhone 10 nowadays. So there is a very interesting future for uh, smart devices for the interface of voice technology, personal digital assistant. So I, I've, I, I talk to a lot of companies, I visit a lot of countries, and, and voice and digital assistant is the next platform. All the attention, the expertise, the money pouring in this area is really enormous. I think there are now working 10,000 professionals at, Emma, at Amazon working on the software only from Amazon Alexa. And, if I'm not mistaken, there are now 100 million devices sold from uh, the, uh, the Echo. The, and this is the Alexa for Business, not working perfect, but getting better every week. And in the foreseeable future, you can ask, uh, Alexa, can you please schedule a maintenance for the vending machine? Um, Alexa, can you reschedule my appointment with Bob to tomorrow, 3 p.m.? Um, Alexa, is there still room in conference room 002, etc., etc., etc. Alexa, can you please order me some printing paper? This will be po possible in the foreseeable future. Narrow tasks, but uh, there are a lot of people nowadays doing that uh, task. And this is a company called Soul Machines, and it is creating human-like uh, digital avatars for customer service. If you also activate the camera, I'll also be able to see your facial expressions. Thank you for granting access to your camera. I see you are interested in AutoCAD, including specialized tool sets. Are you a current user of AutoCAD? Okay, I think this will be the future of customer service, of a part of customer service, where you can log into a website 24-7 and you can talk to an avatar, narrow domain questions, frequently ask, and it will advise you about a uh, lost password, etc., etc. So no full conversation, chit chat, right? Just frequently asked uh, questions. And we've all, okay, who, which of you has seen the example with the Google Duplex, the assistant? Okay, 30%, maybe 40%. So for the people who haven't heard this example, it's the Google Duplex. It's an AI system uh, that uh, can make a reservation in a restaurant on your behalf. So it's, it's, it's making a phone call. So the gentleman you hear is not real, but the woman you hear is real. And this is a reservation for a restaurant. Good evening. Hello? Hello. Hi. Um, I'd like to reserve a table for Friday the 3rd. He's not real. Okay, hold on one moment. She's real. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. So Friday, November 3rd, how many people? For two people. Two people? Yeah. What time? At 5 p.m. Okay. And your name? The first name is Daniel. That's D-A-N-I-E-L. Okay. You're all set. Okay, great. Thanks. We'll see you next Friday. Okay, thank you. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. Conversational AI. And the next step for the digital assistant is... Of course, making reservation, expanding this software worldwide. But the next step is uh, having a, a chit chat, a small conversation with the digital assistant. So, uh, so, so Amazon wants that Alexa uh, is is our friend, and and in the in the in the far future, our our coach, our assistant, also our mental coach. But the next step is having a chit chat, a small conversation with uh, the Alexa system. Uh, special teams have been appointed to this task. But this is really extremely difficult to have a small conversation. Um, uh, this is not uh, like they, they say at Singularity University, a moonshot idea. This is like a vacation to Mars. That's the, 
uh, how, how difficult uh, this is. But I think in the future, this is Replica. Re Replica is an AI system, an app that wants to be your friend. And you, 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 have a, you, you, you have a conversation with this system, and it gets to know you. It, you can give it reminders, etc. It, does it work perfect? It doesn't, but it, it will within a decade. And then some of people in our society will find it very comforting to have a conversation with an AI system because it's always there 24 seven and especially in mental health care where people are ashamed to talk about their problems or, or they are afraid that they, their friends find them annoying because they talk a lot about their problems or their grief or et cetera, et cetera. And there are also, you, you also know these people that find it difficult to have social interaction. I ha in the past I had some of these colleagues they were <coughs> developers. Um, <laughs> and these, there are certain people in our society that find it difficult to have social interaction and they will turn e easier to these kind of AI systems. So this is not futuristic. This is what will happen. Some people at some point in their life will turn to AI system to find a, a friend or a friendly conversation. The fourth wave is autonomous AI. So the, you can see with the digital assistant, right? Helping you before you knew you needed help. Um, so I always like the notification when you're somewhere and your calendar gives you the notification. It's better to leave and to, to, because it's, uh, there's a traffic jam or etc. etc. And this principle, uh, and then everywhere, right? Multiply 500. And the fourth wave is autonomous AI. So in the, in the future, let's say within, okay, let, let me be careful, seven years from now, you will have an app that will answer emails on your behalf, that will change um, your calendar uh, based on a recently received uh, voicemail. Uh, it, will, it will renew or it will stop your phone subscription based on data and uh, price. It will autonomous, autonomous, autonomously help you with certain tasks. So in the future, you can ask, you can make a screenshot of an invitation to a party, and you can ask your digital assistant, "Can you uh, add this to my calendar, please?" You can make a picture of a board game, and you can ask your assistant, "What kind of board game is this?" You can make a screenshot of a uh, recipe, and you can ask your digital assistant to make a grocery list based on this recipe. You can make a picture of your uh, washing machine, and uh, your digital assistant. Uh, assistant will find the YouTube video accompanied uh, with the specific part you are looking for. So 24-7, 365, micro convenience. And in, let's say, a decade, we will, I'm, I'm sorry, it is possible to have a digital assistant in your ear, uh, whispering notifications, reminders, etc., helping you through the day, answering questions, how high is Mount Everest, etc., etc. So this might be difficult to imagine, but what if I told you 10 years ago there would be a game called Fortnite and there would be a concert named Marshmallow and 10 million people would attend this concert in Marshmallow. And what if I told you 10 years ago there was a game called League of Legends and 60 million people would watch the final in real time between two gamers and the arena would be filled with 40,000 40, uh, people. And predicting the digital assistant ecosystem is like predicting the success of Candy Crush 15 years ago. It's impossible to imagine how this ecosystem will look like. But there are also some disadvantages to the qualitative growth spurt of artificial intelligent systems. So you can read on my website an extensive blog, 12 disadvantages for today I picked the two most important one. The first disadvantage of artificially intelligent systems is fake versus real. 
is that we cannot distinct anymore through voice cloning technology, face swapping technology, uh, generative adversarial networks that are creating text. What is fake and what is real? Jennifer Lawrence, Steve Buscemi, from, he's from Reservoir Dogs, and she's from Hunger Games. Okay, and uh, which of you knows the, 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 the software called Deepfake Technology? Please raise your hand. Okay, about 30%, 40%. So uh, Deepfake Technology is face swapping technology where you have a few pictures of, let's say, Bob, and you take 10 of his pictures and you can uh, paste it on somebody else's uh, uh, body and you can have him do anything uh, you like. So now for $40, when you go to the dark web, uh, you can uh, ask someone to make this kind of video of somebody doing something with a few pictures taken of, of somebody's face. And for $40, you have a deep fake uh, video. So this is Jennifer Lawrence. I expected Amy to win. So I, I just like, it was just, I, this, was, this was very truly surprising for me. Um, yeah, I, I was just really surprised. Hi. Uh, Sheridan Watson from BuzzFeed right here. Hi. Um, so you're a huge Bravo fan. Oh, Who yes. was your favorite and least favorite housewife of all cities? <laughs> okay. Uh, I think she's, she's a prettier in normal life. So, and this is NVIDIA. This is NVIDIA uh, creating videos of people that never existed. Generative adversarial networks. They are using to create, uh, uh, these people never existed. So have a look. True human-like. So you can order your digital assistant with the click of a mouse. And this is a video generated by an AI system uh, based on examples of the real world. It's also a system created by NVIDIA. Uh, and as you can see, it's not perfect, but it's getting there in a couple of years. And I didn't even mention the voice cloning technologies where you need a few minutes of somebody's voice and you can, you can download somebody's voice, for instance, of an international speaker. You can download it, uh, 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 the MP3, and you can upload it to this uh, software. Uh, there are several uh, uh, software programs that can do this and have voice cloning technology. So we now live in a post-truth world. And if you think fake news is a problem in 2019, we'll check back. I'll be back in 10 years and we will laugh about the amount of fake news that is floating our world um, in, in, in 10 years. So the second disadvantage is algorithmic decision making. So the fact that algorithms are increasingly making decisions for us, about us, and on our behalf. So as you know, governments and, and, and companies are using large amounts of data to train their models, but this data is often wrongly classified, it's messy, it's biased, etc., etc. So we overestimate ourselves uh, in this uh, category. And this can have a huge impact on me, on you, on my wife, my children, your nephew, etc., etc. So discrimination and exclusion can be expected when we let algorithms make important decisions. It's important not to be light-weighted about this. And especially when all these systems are not transparent, you know, the black box idea, black box problem, we must avoid constantly dealing with the hat from Harry Potter's film where nobody knows exactly what is happening, but you are confronted with the irreversible outcome. Once again, when we talk about the digital butler, there are also disadvantages. One of the disadvantages is that I am afraid that we are um, reflecting less on our own consumption because this software, these apps make it so 
easy to reorder, renew, to buy, to etc., etc., that we reflect less and less on our own consumption. More stuff and more surfaces, but the question is whether it makes us happier. And I'm also a little bit afraid that this, this, this digital butler deprives us of the opportunity to autonomously unravel our own wishes and idea, autonomously. And because 86% of the people with my pro profile like mashed potatoes, I'll probably like this too. But that is not the case. And I'm afraid that our taste and that of our children can be manipulated towards the commercially most appealing outcome. And Amazon determines the birthday present for my brother. Google Maps determines how I travel. Tinder chose a friend of mine's life partner. And YouTube determines what kind of news I consume and thus determines my worldview. We must prevent our lives from taking place in autoplay. 70% of the videos watched on YouTube are a, a recommendation for a next video. 70%. So we must prevent our lives taking place in autoplay. And I'm also a little bit afraid that because this digital butler deprives us of inner inconvenience, we become less tolerant of inner inconvenience. And you may think this is a silly thought, but it's not. We've seen a similar process with the rise of the smartphone. This deprived us of uncomfortable boredom. You all know what, what I'm talking about. I'm 42. I remember as a kid being extremely bored, not knowing what to do. My children are 9 and 12. They, they forgot how, it's, how it is to be bored, you know, grabbing smartphone, playing a game, checking social media, etc., etc. But we need boredom because of creativity and emotional growth. And I'm also a little bit worried that this digital butler mistakenly gives us the idea that the whole world revolves around us because of the digital butler, the smart machines, the on-demand economy, all this extreme customer centricity. I, I'm a little bit afraid it sometimes strengthens individualism. Okay, but what are these solutions? Are there solutions? Of course, there are. Governments and companies need to be very careful of what kind of AI they design in-house. And we as a public can also do something. You can educate yourselves about artificial intelligence. So congratulations. Attending my talk today has been one of your best decisions of the day. I'm serious. Um, what is one of the solutions, my friends, is look within yourselves to your light side and to your dark side. That's one of the solutions, what we as a public can do. So first of all, we have to expand and strengthen our light side, our human capabilities. Things like the use of fantasy, creativity, thinking out of the box, etc., etc. You know all what I'm talking about. The things we do better than AI systems. But especially focusing on things like empathy, affection, warmth. Because these are the emotions we are going to need to maintain the human touch in the decision-making processes of the future. We need to stay human. Let not the, the, the algorithms decide everything for us because it's so easy to let an AI system make a difficult decision about employment or unemployment. And we as individuals can also use our talents, empower ourselves, strengthen ourselves, follow our passion, our purpose. But we also have to strengthen and embrace our more dark side. Because as I indicated earlier, I am afraid that because the digital butler deprives us of inner inconvenience, we become less tolerant of inner inconvenience. 
But we need discomfort. We need discomfort for human growth. Let me tell you a short story. As a teenager, I sometimes found it difficult to face my darker emotions, things like my anger or my fears. And at a certain point, I discovered that every discomfort from the outside world related to these inner in, uh, uncomfortable feelings. And someday I just stood still and decided to face my more darker emotions and I grew as a human being. So discomfort is the gateway towards reflection and human growth. So we need discomfort because it's the gateway towards reflection and reflection is human growth. So I think all this discomfort that has been taken away from us is very crucial for our process as human beings. Because out of discomfort, we take new steps in our work, in our relationship, etc., etc. It's a very vital part of who we are, just like boredom. And when we do this, we will always distinguish ourselves from smart computers. And we will maintain the human touch in the decision-making processes of the future. And we are ultimately less sensitive to the suggestions and the distraction and the manipulation of smart software. Thank you very much for your attention and your time.